Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about one of my most favorite topics and one of the most important topics on the planet, forests. And specifically we're going to be talking about this very interesting idea known as the biotic pump that was proposed a few decades ago and might redefine our understanding of our own planet. Let's talk about this and welcome to Odeme. There are a lot of theories in science that are not widely accepted for one reason or another, and some of them might be too extreme, they might explain things in a very unusual way, but some of them might need to be examined in a lot of detail and mostly because it might help our civilization to survive much longer. In this case I'm talking about the idea known as the biotic pump. Alright, so let's talk a little bit more about this. I'm sure most of you have seen this sometime in middle school or another science class you might have taken a long time ago, and this was probably something you kind of looked at, said okay that makes sense, and moved on with your life. This is known as the water cycle. This is exactly what I learned in school and this is what most of us always took for granted. The way that the water cycle works on planet earth is that water evaporates from oceans, it moves around the planet moving closer to the inner side of continents, creates a lot of precipitation and rain, these create rivers, rivers flow down, become lakes, lakes become rivers again, and then all of this returns back into the ocean to start the cycle again. This obviously happens all the time, nobody obviously argues this, but the thing is, is that all that's happening here? Is this the only thing that's going on? Because this seems very passive and it looks like there's nothing we can do to really kind of break this very easily. Turns out that this might have been a very primitive approach to how the water cycle works on our planet. And specifically here we're talking about this idea that it looks like forests also play a really important role in allowing the water cycle to exist on our planet and might actually be way way more important than anyone ever believed this to be possible a few decades ago. And the way to start thinking about this is to ask yourself a question, why is it that if we were to go into certain locations on our planet, specifically in the middle of a continent, they would have a lot of rainfall, like right here in the middle of the Amazon in Brazil. Yet when we look at some other locations, specifically right here in the middle of Saharan Africa, the rainfall falls dramatically and there's obviously no trees there either. The previous explanation argued that, well because there is no rain, trees don't grow and if there is a lot of rain, a lot of trees will grow. This obviously makes sense and a lot of scientists usually accept this idea, but what if it's actually the other way around? What if it's actually the trees, or in this case the lack of trees, being the reason why there is no rain in the Saharan Africa almost at all? and a lot of trees being the reason why the Amazon is literally the rainforest. It's the forest of rain. And it's really not that difficult to imagine how all of this would work. So here's a typical simple plant that absorbs all of the water from the ground, eventually this water makes it up the stem, some of it is used up, but a lot of it is also evaporated from the leaves. We know that this is something that happens all the time, and as a matter of fact, if you have trouble at home with uh, humidity levels, plants can usually take care of this pretty easily. A lot of this evaporation then starts forming clouds, as you can see in this satellite image from the Amazon, and the sheer amounts of clouds and water they produce is absolutely staggering. This moisture and these clouds then lower the pressure, bringing in even more moisture and forming the rain clouds that then cause the area to start receiving a lot more rain. This type of a process easily explains these unusual observations that in the forested area we can always expect no decrease in rainfall, even as we move farther and farther inland. The amount of rain does not seem to decrease. Whereas when looking at areas without any forest in them, the amount of rain is highest on the coastal areas right here because that's when the pressure will be lowest and the evaporation will be the highest. In other words, in this example right here, we'll expect most rain to be in this area and then also this area here having a relatively similar amount of rain because of the forest present there. Which is sort of what we observe in real life as well. So here the trees are literally like a really large water fountain. They capture all of the water from inside the ground and then they slowly release it into the atmosphere, allowing for this water cycle to be kind of actively regulated as opposed to just being passive like we learned back in school. With a single tree being able to release about hundreds of liters of water per day. That is a huge amount. 
That means that if you were to compare a lake and a forest of the same size, forest would release more water into the atmosphere than the actual evaporation from the river or a lake in the vicinity. But is there any actual evidence to any of this? Well, a few studies have been conducted, and specifically studies using the isotopes of water, trying to investigate if any of the water in the Amazon, for example, came from the trees or if all of it was from the oceans. Typical water from the ocean will have a lot of the oxygen-16 molecules, so the ratio here is pretty well established. And so when studying the rainfall in the Amazon, the scientists did discover that the rain here possessed a lot more oxygen-18 isotopes, suggesting of course that the water came from the trees themselves, not so much from the ocean. But unfortunately, not enough studies have been conducted to see if this is really true, or if the water cycle is just this simple idea that we learn in school. So we definitely need a lot more proof before we can confirm this theory and make it a fact. But when it comes to the biotic pump, the more recent propositions are even to some extent more extreme. They suggest that the trees don't just produce rain, they also produce the wind that then carries the rain around the planet. In other words, they present the idea of the so-called flying rivers that move across the planet carrying all of the water with them, allowing remote regions to receive rain that was created by forests thousands of kilometers away. It presents trees and forests not even as just fountains anymore, but more like a typical lung of a person. It doesn't just create the water, it also creates the wind needed to carry this water across the planet. Once again, most of these theories have also been confirmed here in the Amazon, but very, very few scientists are currently actively investigating this in more detail. But the idea here is really solid. It suggests that about 40% of all of the precipitation, all of the rain, and all of the clouds that bring this rain don't come from the oceans. 40% come from the forests far, far, far away. This illustration from the Science Magazine, for example, shows us where some of these flying rivers might be located and how they move the water and the rains across the planet, allowing some of the more remote regions on the planet to receive rain from really far away. More interestingly here is the suggestion that these very, very vast forests of Russia right here carry all of this water across the so-called flying river all the way to China. And a lot of these rains then bring about 80% of all of the rains and all of the uh, precipitation to China from far, far in the west, from Russia and Scandinavia. With the implication here being that these forests are extremely important for how much rain and how much precipitation these regions in the east will get. And if that's even remotely correct, that's a huge deal. It means that the most populous nation on earth gets most of its precipitation and water that produces all of its food, not from the oceans nearby, but from the forests thousands and thousands of kilometers to the west of the actual country. And the recent investigations also suggest that the flying river of Amazon carries as much water up in the air as the Amazon River itself does, so it becomes extremely important to the circulation of precipitation and water across the entire South America. And that of course brings us to the next idea here, deforestation. The forests of Amazon and the vast forests of Scandinavia and Russia have been slowly reducing in size, mostly because of various types of human activity. Here is one such example from only a few decades ago. The amounts of forests that were destroyed in the Amazon here are absolutely staggering. And this of course implies that, if this theory is correct, essentially it is like cutting lungs out of our planet. It destroys the ability of the planet to create rain and to create wind across the planet, thus limiting the amount of water that remote regions will start getting. By reducing the forest in the Amazon, we also reduce the amount of rain carried across the South America and thus affect all of the regions nearby and even at farther distances. And interestingly, even though China has been pretty active, at harvesting all sorts of forests here in Russia um, and for the most part get most of their coal and most of their wood from there. By reducing all of these beautiful forests, China is also technically shooting itself in the foot. It will lead to even less rain, even less amounts of food produced in the country and eventually might lead to a massive collapse of the biosphere and of course agricultural capacity of China. And by the way, some of the flying rivers also carry all of this precipitation to North America as well, which means that the United States will be affected by the effects of the deforestation of Amazon in the near future. 
But that's of course assuming all of this is real and all of this is true. Right now, it's a theory that hasn't really been supported by a lot of academics, mostly because a lot of scientists are kind of uncertain about putting their name on the line here. But here's the truth though. This is one of those risks I think we need to take. If we are correct about this, and if flying rivers are a thing, and if actual precipitation is formed by forests and not so much by the oceans, this is extremely important for us, because deforestation today is one of the biggest problems on the planet. And the less forests we get, the less rain we'll get, the less food we can produce, and eventually this might lead to a global biosphere collapse. And so if it comes down to putting your name on the line to possibly save the biosphere on the planet, or staying silent and doing nothing because you think the theory is foolish, I think I would probably choose the former. This is definitely one of those theories that if we are wrong about this, well, not a big deal. But if we are correct and flying rivers are an actual phenomenon that carry most of the rain around the planet, we definitely need to turn this into a scientific fact and protect our forests even more so than before. Because according to the biotic pump theory, by cutting down the forests, we're literally robbing ourselves of the lungs of the planet. And that is just not acceptable. But anyway, you can find more about this study in some of the articles in the description below. But most importantly, I really hope some of the bigger scientists and scientific names that do carry a lot in the scientific community join and try to either prove or disprove this idea. At this point, this is really important for us to know as a fact or as something that was a cool idea but is just not true at all. So hopefully in the next few years we'll figure this out and if biotic pump is an actual phenomenon, we will start protecting our beautiful forests and create even more laws preventing deforestation in the future. Anyway, on that note, check out the papers and various articles in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. And also maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon. And also just so you know, in the last few years I've been consistently donating and supporting various reforestation programs, but I know personally that it, this is just not enough. Even if we continuously replant the trees, it's actually a lot more important for us to preserve what's already there. Either way though, a lot of these Patreon donations eventually end up in these good causes and I've been pretty active in trying to find other programs that help forests around the planet. On that note, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.